Right. So, um, two years ago, I did uh, the LARP Sigrisdotter along with uh, Elvira Falstalen, Lucas Rynklint, and Rosalind Jötberg. And it's a LARP about a modern day matriarchy based on the book Egolia's Daughters by Jed Brantenberg. Um, the LARP has been set up twice in Sweden, and this November it will be set up a third time in Denmark. Um, the setting is based around uh, a bunch of families who uh, get together to celebrate this super archaic tradition of the young boys marrying, being married off to uh, the young girls. Um, and uh, the vision we had for this LARP um, was to swap the power structures of the genders. Um, we wanted to make uh, the subtle aspects of patriarchy visible by doing so. Uh, but since these structures are pretty complex, um, and uphold it subconsciously. Uh, we need to provide tools to our players to make it work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to guide you through what we did before the LARP, during the LARP, and after the LARP to guide uh, our players through the matriarchy and out on the other side. So, before the LARP, how do we guide our players into a matriarchy? Um, first things first, simplification. Um, Apart from what Siri said, uh, I will talk about both female and female players and male and female characters. I will also talk about non-binary players, and I'll probably mix them up, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> the first thing we did was to make all the characters either male or female into, in the game. Uh, this was a pretty hard decision, decision because obviously non-binaries exist, um, but we wanted to focus on this certain type of gender oppression, and therefore we made this decision. We also wanted um, that the players had uh, characters of the same gender or similar gender that they identify from. If you were non-binary, you could choose um, what character you'd like to play. Uh, secondly, in the line of simplification, we decided to not change uh, the gender roles, but only the power structure, uh, because we did not want to shame femininity in any way. Um, so instead of you know make, making the male characters have ribbon in their beards and uh, the female characters super aggressive, we just made all the traditionally female traits high status and something that was desirable. Uh, and thirdly, uh, in the line of simplification, we decided to use our own world as a backdrop, with the disclaimer that all the world, big world leaders and all the cultural figures were just female and people could make up the world as we went along. Um, Secondly, something we did before the LARP was to subtly guide the players into the matriarchy by tweaking the communication. Uh, one obvious thing we did was that all the pictures depicted women in position of power uh, and still in their like, very feminine clothing, but in positions of power. Um, and the other thing we did with the communication was to change the language so that females and femininity were the norm. Um, for example, sex was a big part of, of this game. Of, and instead of talking about uh, sex with penetration, we talked about enclosing sex, making uh, the females the norm rather than males. We also never once, I think, mentioned male genitalia, uh, but instead referred to it as down there and something that should be like ashamed about while well, menstruation and pregnancy and female genitalia was talked about. Uh, a lot during the game. Um, oh yeah, one more thing we did was that we referred to the young adult as young women and boys. Example from the real world. Right, and during the LARP, um, as I said before, we don't want to shame femininity in any way, and therefore um, we decided that we wanted to make the players of the female characters as comfortable as possible. So they should do as little as possible possible to change uh, their normal behavior. We didn't want them to become some kind of um, uh, loud and aggressive people. So instead, we put restrictions on, uh, on the players of the male characters, uh, both physical and, uh, and verbal ones. So the physical ones, the most obviously obvious ones, was the clothing. Um, we decided that instead of sexual, like, uh, sexualized normal uh, normal, what's considered normal sexually, uh, sexually uh, attractive, we decided that collarbones were considered sexualized, e the equivalent to like female breasts in our world. So they had to cover them up at all times. 
Um, also, they have to wear sleeves uh, on a normal day that went um, like above or below the elbow um, because that was the equivalent of the skirt length of our world. So if you went to a party, you could wear a t-shirt, and if you really wanted to be really slutty, you could just, you know, go for something sleeveless. Um, <laughs> this meant that um, male characters had to control uh, and check the clothing all the time, and we could play um, on objectification of a character without actually hurting the off-game player. Right. Um, we also talked about verbal restrictions. This was pretty hard because, once again, we did not want to make the loudest person get the most time to talk. We didn't want um, the communication style to be like competitive. We wanted to, um, to um, enforce that empathy and uh, the collaborative style of talking was something that was desirable. So, once again, uh, female players players of female characters, <laughs> will uh, do whatever they want, talk uh, as normally as they can, and we put restrictions of the male characters. Um, so they were encouraged to wait for a couple of seconds uh, to answer a question, for example, in order to give uh, the female characters a room to think. However, if there was a too long silence, it was also the male character's responsibility to fill it up with like um, um, chatter of some sort. Uh, and when they screw up, because they will screw up, because this is, this is kind of contradictory, the shame will be on the male characters. Um, <laughs> because loudness and uh, the competitive way of speaking is frowned upon by Sig the Sigurds Dr. Society. Um, it was pretty hard to start with, but we worked it pretty thoroughly, and in the end, after a day or so, it went pretty well. Um, right. And the last thing, talking about shaming. Um, instead of praising people for doing household work or for, for like keeping up the communication or, or um, the everyday work, it was, it was the male uh, character's job to like make everything flow and make everything of the, this tradition work. Um, but they were never to be expected to get any compliments for it. However, if you were not up to par with the, um, with the certain level, you will get shamed. Um, this is to portray all the uh, invisible work and all the emotional labor that most female people do in the real life. Right. After the LARP, this is pretty interesting, um, because we have several months to get our players into the world of Sigurd Zoster, and we have like half a day to get them out in the real world again. Um, and normally when you play a LARP about heavy oppression, you can just, you know, workshop uh, the oppressed in, in one group and the oppressors in one group, and then you debrief together. This game, we had a little problem since, you know, the gender power structures are reversed in the real life. So basically, we had a group that played female characters, who are mostly female of game, um, who felt angry, because this game they played is about their everyday life of game, and the males in the other group, the male characters, or the players of the male characters, became like some kind of representation. So they were mad and didn't want to go meet, meet uh, the male players. The male players, on the other hand, um, were, had a lot of realizations, felt guilty, and didn't dare to meet the females. And above of this, we had a bunch of non-binary players who, except for those two experience, also had this um, feeling of gender dysphoria to add to this. So uh, what we basically did was that we uh, designed the entire after party to like, accommodate to all of these needs and slowly pace people back uh, to uh, today's society. Um, so we had like a room for, for male players, player for male characters, and a room for player for male characters, non-binary people, people don't, that didn't want to talk about LARP, people that wanted to talk about LARP, and so on and so forth. Um, it, I, well, I've been told afterwards that it was very appreciated. All right, let's see, I forgot about my slides. There we go. <laughs> Quick conclusion, preparation is key. Um, it's pretty hard to make subconscious aspects of the patriarchy visible. Um, it qui required a lot of simplification, uh, tweaking of communication, and heavy workshopping. But in the end, it worked pretty fine. Um, don't forget to take care of your players. Uh, try to get a room like somewhere during the LARP that you can talk with them, and try to adapt the debrief to twist it to your players' needs. And finally, uh, if you 
can make yourself understood in Danish, there will be a next run, the 27th of November to the 2nd of December in Denmark. Thank you.